Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently holding for further traffic clearance. Check out Kristen's new website, MagicalJourneysVacations.com for all your vacation needs. Disney, Universal, Cruise Lines, and more. Thank you for traveling with us. MagicalJourneysVacations.com Have her book your magical vacation today. So I'm waiting for my lasagna to get done. Ooh, that nice, nice. Oh, fine. I like that. You know, I had I had to make something. I had to make something because my kitchen is going to be unavailable as of tomorrow for the next few days because I'm packing it up. So, so did you did you make, I had to make something that's going to last? Did you did you make the lasagna, Jeff, or are you microwaving or uh, you're, you're baking lasagna like um, like Stouffer's? I I made the lasagna. You made I it. Did. Uh, chef she 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 <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Hell yeah! I don't go hungry here, damn it. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to edit it now. Is the lasagna. <laughs> actually, actually, I love I, I love the fact that we open the show like this. Um, this is WDW After oh, Dark. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That was great. <laughs> This is WDW After Dark, your weekly webcast for edgy adult Disney fan lasagna talk. Uh, welcome there to our go. show, Lasagna Talk. Would you like some lasagna? Jeff has got some in the oven waiting. He's baking. And we also yes, got I a do. Lot, a lot of Disney discussion for you today. Now, uh, last week we talked about some great Disney news, and today we've got some Disney discussion on tap for you. So uh, pop open your frosty cold beverage and enjoy the next hour of great Disney discussion there at www.afterdark.com. You can tell your friends that you're watching us or listening to us on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. And there on our website, you can also check out great deals. Let's not forget to thank um, these great affiliates and sponsors like Magical Journeys Vacations. They have got so many great itineraries for the Disney Cruise Line, Star Wars, and Marvel now. We've talked about it uh, here on the show. So right now, why don't you uh, decide on booking a Disney cruise? It's been rated the top cruise line since day one. So experience it for yourself. And if you haven't, well, you need to save up for it. The Disney Cruise Line is going to many places in, uh, this year. And we want to make sure that you uh, book your trip with Kristen of Magical Journeys vacations.com click that link and if you're going to disneyland or walt disney world resort uh disney cruise line or adventures by disney Kristen will hook you up take all the time and and uh, uh to give you the best deal possible as well as save you time and and, and uh, save you money and, and all those great shortcuts that she knows that she can do for you so don't book direct with disney put the money and support our show and book your trip with Kristen. she'll appreciate it so will we and then you can also use our Amazon link too. Uh, we're updating our Amazon links and we're going to put a shop uh, Amazon uh, button there at the top of the page so you can check it out. Um, right I now, take credit a, for that. Thank you, Eric, for that. Um, so it can be mobile friendly. So uh, be sure to check it out in the weeks and days to come. Every time you want to go shop Amazon, before you start typing AMA and doing all that, go ahead. And click our banner and Amazon will show us a little bit of love. It's like throwing a little, a few cents here and there, throwing it in the tip jar for us, providing the show for you for free every single week. And last but not least, Fandango, Fandango, a great place for you to check out and click our link so that you can get your tickets to Beauty and the Beast, as well as Spider-Man Homecoming. You can get alerts when that uh, those uh, become available for you and the upcoming Star Wars films. So uh, be sure to check that out there all of our shopping links to support our show there is at wdwafterdark.com and now on with the show wdw after dark now Live 
presents Disney Discussion, a roundtable panel. Not only are we talking lasagna, but we also have some great Disney discussion tonight. I am Al John Go, lifelong Disney fan, love Star Wars, love Marvel, and we appreciate you tuning in to another edition of WDW After Dark. Joining us today, we are here with Uncle Servo. Yes, Eric Allen, the Mighty Marvel Geek. He's joining yeah, us boy. Well, the host of Sorcom Review on Sorcerer Radio. What's going on, Eric? Oh, man, just, just trying to get home in time to be part of this, man. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm glad you, well, glad you made it. Yeah, but uh, no, I, the uh, the discussion segment, or the discussion for tonight is uh, it, it's something that you may have seen. Well, okay. I guess it's easier to say you pretty much have been living under a rock if you haven't seen. It's a uh, it, it's a rumor about new and alternative ways to get around the Walt Disney World Resort. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, we should just stress this is all just rumor and hearsay right now, but there are there are facts to this, and Jeff, I think you have those facts. Yeah, Jeff Davis I uh, do. from uh, yes. DW60 on Sorcerer Radio. Jeff, not only do you deliver news, but also the latest rumors. And uh, t- why don't you open up the show and tell us a little bit about what kind of rumors this is uh, This is exactly. Okay. It's like Eric said. It's all speculation. It's a rumor. There's no truth. It's a rumor. There's no truth to this. Disney has not come out and said, yeah, this is what we're doing. But at the same time, some permits that were uh, filed from Disney that suggest Walt Disney World may be getting its own gondola transportation system. Now, I'll stop right there. A lot of people are kind of scratching their head, maybe going, okay, what is a gondola? And we're not talking about the kind of gondola where you're pushing a boat through the canals of Venice and some Italian guy is standing behind you going, oh, so let me, oh, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, um, not exactly how I would have explained it, but he's absolutely correct. It's not that. It is <laughs> because that was a great way of explaining how that's not what it is. Actually, Eric, thank you because I really enjoyed that. I want you to sing that again before the end of the show. Okay. What that's it a, is? That's the only lyrics that I know. And that's the that only song. lyrics you need to know. That's because that's okay. it's fantastic the way you do it. It is a transportation system that uses cable cars along a cable track that takes you from one point to another. Think of a ski lift. It takes you from that type of a lift system uses cables and everything else. It takes you from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain, and the cars come back, and it continues. It's just never-ending. Never ending. It's like an Omni mover. It just keeps on going and keeps on going and keeps on going. Okay. So in a way, the old Skyway system at the Magic Kingdom, which Al John's going to talk about in, a sh- in just a short amount of time. Okay. What you're looking at right here, this is a gondola system. This is what they're talking about. And according to the plans and the permits that were filed, there are different L-shape type of uh, towers that are located in different parts of the Walt Disney World Resort. Uh, and typically, those are used to change direction in overhead cable-based gondolas, which you see here. Now, what they're saying is the new gondola system could be a system-linking transportation opportunity that would take you from like the Hollywood Studios to the Art of Animation Resort to the Caribbean Beach Resort, and also to Epcot. Now, these cars that travel across this cable can hold upwards of 30, 40, 50 people in just one car. And it is a way to alleviate traffic in an area. Now, this new type of system, it's not exactly brand new, but it's gaining popularity. And one of the reasons it's gaining popularity You see it in a big city and a very popular city like London, England. A new system has been proposed for New York City to, you know, connect Long Island with New Jersey to alleviate traffic. And people apparently love to travel on these things. And so this is what 
the permit plans that were filed is what Disney supposedly, quotation, supposedly talking about. And an opportunity for you to travel between a resort and a theme park without having to use your own vehicle or without having to use your own uh, d- using Disney bus transportation, because some people hate Disney bus pr- transportation. That's just the way it is. It's exciting, it's new, and it's fresh. But at the same time, there are a lot of questions pertaining to the gondola system that we're going to talk about during this discussion. Now, I mentioned the Skyway. Al John. Yes. I have visited Walt Disney World way back in the 70s and the 80s and everything else <laughs> when it comes to the Skyway at the Magic Kingdom, which at one time was really a very popular attraction, was used quite a bit. What, what can you tell them about the history about this attraction? Well, first of all, let me tell you that I white-knuckled it the first time I rode the gondolas at Disneyland. I was yeah. scared. I was so scared, and I was afraid of heights. I'm not like that anymore, but... You know, I was I was thinking all kinds of disaster movie craziness from you know, but <laughs> but the Skyway um, uh, attraction at Disneyland and Magic Kingdom and Tokyo Disneyland uh, took people from Fantasyland to Tomorrowland. It was called Skyway to Fantasyland or Skyway to Tomorrowland, and uh, they had several different iterations. And it first started opening uh, back in 1956, June 10th. Um, and it opened finally on June 23rd of 1956 over there in Disneyland. In Magic Kingdom, it opened in 1971 and closed in 1999. And in Tokyo, the last of it uh, was uh, April of uh, 1983, and then it closed in 1998. So this gondola lift ride, you know, very similar to what you'd see in a ski lodge for a ski lift uh, type of attraction. Uh, the buckets, as Eric had uh, you know, referenced in, in, in previous shows, is something that went back and forth. Um, based on a system that uh, Disneyland had, or Walt Disney saw back in uh, Switzerland um, for the Matterhorn. You know? So the Von Roll Limited uh, company actually produced these uh, and made it specifically for the Disneyland Resort. Um, and it was, it was a pretty cool system. But ultimately, they ended up closing... Uh, these uh, these buckets or the Skyway because of structural integrity issues that happened, uh, especially there at Disneyland, because the the system actually went through the Matterhorn bobsled attraction, and the pylon that kept that up ended up fatiguing and cracking to the point where the only way they could fix it was to actually go in and remove the top very much like the Yeti <laughs> there at our, our, our disco Yeti that doesn't move over there at uh, at Magic or at the Animal Kingdom uh, for Expedition Everest. But yeah, they'd have to take the whole top off and, and refurbish it and fix it. And that wasn't going to happen. So uh, mm-hmm. that coupled with a bunch of uh, other, um, you know, the metal fatigue that happened there at the Skyway 1994, stress cracks, like I said, had developed inside uh, the Matterhorn bobsleds. So they decided to go ahead and uh, close it down and dismantle all the stations. Um, so, and there was also other nefarious things uh, that happened in the buckets um, without camera supervision. And, and other people, other people also, right. uh, there were safety concerns of people dropping things out of the, the buckets uh, onto people's heads and, and different things. You know, people... Guest, guest mentality has changed tremendously from the fifties to today. Yeah, and um, you know, and let's look back at how the Disneyland uh, theme park, when it first opened, people actually used to attend the park in 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 in, in their Sunday best. They uh-huh. used to they used to come sure. in their suits, you know, almost after church. They would come in and they, they would come in and ride the attractions and be very respectful, walk around like a like a walk in the park and enjoy the attractions. But things change over time and people, um, you know, unfortunately, for good, better or worse, you know, um, they end up uh, defacing a lot of the attractions and, and doing all kinds of stuff. So the maintenance was just unbearable you know for some of those things you know because there's not someone looking over your shoulder um 
you know, making sure that people didn't deface or defile uh, the attraction ride vehicle in any way because there's no cameras in those things, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, the different r- risk and safety concerns for guests, um, you know, maintenance issues, uh, ride attraction shutting down, um, you know, all that stuff came into play. But what Jeff is alluding to, and as I showed the video, um, the gondola system looks really, really cool. Uh, you know, you saw it rolling across in Manhattan. They have a tramway, I think is what they call it, in Manhattan. And it looks super cool. And it's super fast. looks very safe. Technology yeah. has progressed to the point where we can possibly see a, a system like this that's very inexpensive, inexpensive in a relative term, um, to building a new monorail. Um, yeah. You know, and so and this will also be ecologically friendly as well. So sure. that is a little bit of background, but I tell you, man, those buckets were cool and it is a part of my childhood. I'll never forget it, but it can open itself up in, in, in park use to, uh, to some eyesores. You know, right now, as we take the, the, uh, the monorail into the Walt Disney World Resort, into Magic Kingdom, there's somewhat of an eyesore there. You you go past some of the uh, the uh, storage facilities and uh, mm-hmm. you, you go through and you see some of the broken down you know uh, ride vehicles and things of that nature, storage uh, containers and things. It's like uh, Disney maybe you should put that in a different area that's not within eye shot of the monorail or <laughs> work on your camouflage. Yeah, yeah put, put new some trees. Put some netting yeah. up, you know. Put some netting up, or, or or block it from the line of sight because that is the worst thing. As I'm going to the Contemporary Resort, I'm looking yeah. over to the left hand side, and there is literally like a little junkyard there. It's like, what is going? Isn't on? Isn't that where the uh, original uh, Walt Disney World uh, runway was at, where um, they would fly it's the close, plane in? Isn't that it, where that area? It's close by. Yeah. yeah, it's close by. You know, I mean, we could do a whole. We we should do a series of like these these. Uh, untold stories of disney you know <laughs> you know because those are my yeah, favorite no kidding, and, you know, yeah. they're my favorite on youtube you know but yeah. Yeah. Um, i think it's a it looks like a really interesting um project of merit you know i mean i don't i would i would feel i would have some reservations uh because currently the monorail is not the most reliable source of transportation guys uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on that eric no i'd I would say that you're probably right, and that's mainly – I really, it's because they're used so much. Say you have a a, a situation like a, a mechanical breakdown that most people would tell you only happens like one in a million. One in a million chance of something happening. You have nine million people visit – Disney World over the course of a year, that one in a million thing is going to happen nine times. Yeah. Just specifically, statistically speaking. Um, now, I will say that the gondola system sounds like a good idea. And you say it's not just places in the U.S. that's that's looking at it. And there are a lot of cities that are being, that are considering cable car systems like this i mean you you looked we saw new york uh washington chicago san diego seattle cleveland cincinnati buffalo baton rouge think about the baton rouge louisiana is considering a cable car system austin texas tampa bay florida and miami they're all looking at it too and there's a reason why all these cities are looking at it and that's because Really, we're kind of behind the rest of the world in many ways when it comes to usage of cable car systems. Uh, I I looked up on some of this earlier today. Uh, There is a cable car system in La Paz, Bolivia. Uh, it's It's been operating two years, and it has it has transported 50 million passengers. Wow. 25 wow. million a That's year. A uh, there's one in Colombia. Uh, I think their their third largest city is. It's not like uh, it's not like the the Cartagena or or Bogota, but they installed one where 
it reduced travel times from 35 minutes down to nine minutes. Whoa, that's huge. Uh -huh. There's uh, one in Algeria, the city of Constantine. They use it approximately three million riders per year. Yeah, that's, that's big. Uh, and another one in Greece on the island of Santorini. They it, they estimate 1,200 people per hour. Huh. So, I, really, if you want to talk about mass capacity, and this is a question that I had about it. It's like, you know, would this system be able to handle the likely capacity? Because this, I see this as Disney kind of getting ready for Star Wars land getting ready for Toy Story Land. You're going to want to get people into Hollywood Studios with a much higher capacity than just a bunch of buses or just some of the friendship boats. And I still and you they're probably still going to run those. But I think now listen let's, let's go ahead and assume that this is indeed what they're working on. They haven't they haven't confirmed it, but they haven't denied it either. So let's just let's just start out on the assumption that yes, this is what they're doing. Now it's going according to the proposed route that we have that I have seen out on the internet, and I shared this picture with the two of y'all. It would connect Epcot through the International Gateway to Hollywood Studios, right right next to the entrance actually but it would also link disney's caribbean beach resort pop century and art of animation guys i think we're seeing the next generation of the monorail loop yeah i mean you think about it you have three resorts connected to one theme park via the monorail and that's great for Magic Kingdom. But I think I think what you're seeing, again, assuming this is what we're going on, you're going to see Disney's Caribbean Beach. Now, Caribbean Beach, it, you, know, you, may, you may already know, it is slated to get a DVC upgrade. It is going to become a DVC resort. Or it's going to have a DVC component. I think these two, these three resorts right here are their next area of focus. So you're going to see them working on, there's a lot of constructions due to be coming on over at Caribbean Beach. Uh, Pop Century, Art of Animation, you know that they got a lot of room to work with too. And I think this is going to be, this is going to be the new magic area. Where you have, these are going to be classified as Disney's Hollywood Studios resorts. You know, kind of like how you got Polynesian Contemporary is, or Magic Kingdom resorts, Boardwalk, uh, Yawn, Yawn, Yawn and Beach, huh? <laughs> Yacht and Beach Club, Swan and Dolphin. Bork, bork. Those, <laughs> those are uh. Epcot resorts. <laughs> See, that's what it is. I was trying to think Yawn and Dolphin, Swan and Dolphin, Yacht and Beach. I was trying to combine them all. I'm, 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 we're making new resorts here as, on the show. Spring and Dirty, Burky, Burky. Bork, 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 bork. Oh, goodness. Don't make me laugh. I'm going to cough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think, that's, I think that's what they're looking at. They're expecting people to come to Hollywood Studios by the truckload. Yeah. Right now, as it stands, you know, there is only that one gate, you know, to enter. Yes. And yes. we know that during Star Wars weekends, it was hugely problematic. Yes, it was. It led to huge traffic delays. Getting in and out of the park was ridiculous. Yes. You know, um, and yes, they're preparing for, you know, extended people, you know, a lot more people to come into Animal Kingdom. They're expecting a lot more people to go to Hollywood Studios. Uh, for Toy Story and Star Wars, you know, we kind of alluded to it, Jeff, did we not, the, in our last week's show, talking about, you know, the 
the expansion of the resorts. You know, as uh, they expand, they're looking yeah. to increase capacity at the resort level at those two different um, uh, properties. And in fact, you know, the, the great thing about the Walt Disney World Resort is that land is not a problem. They have tons no, of no, land no. to develop. No, that's plenty. You know, um, and they need to make sure that when the date is set for Star Wars um, and Toy Story, that they have the capacity to get all those guests. You see, uh, I think it was an additional 500 guests at, at Caribbean, or I'm sorry, at uh, um, Coronado. At Coronado, and probably another 500 guests on, you know, probably for the DVC uh, property. Right. You know, so yeah. that's huge. And that is only the expansion, not to mention the, the, the possibility yeah. of them uh, building another one or two more resorts, because that's just a thousand people. I mean, we're yeah. looking at a huge expansion, and I think Studios is probably going to end up having to build a parking garage of some type, and they're going to yeah. need to shuttle people back and forth from somewhere, somewhere, um, some type of a structure. But but I think this is cool. I think that the technology has gotten better. It's safer. There's a lot of uh, different uh Safety, safety precautions that people can take, uh, you know, to ensure guests. Um, you know, I think that was an issue, Jeff, that you mentioned is what would happen if a, if a gondola got stuck? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing for me, as exciting as this sounds, and during our last show, we talked about fresh and new at Walt Disney World and, you know, how exciting it can be with this, you know, new show that's coming to the magic kingdom or replace wishes it's something new and exciting and we enjoy something like that but for me the safety factor really comes into play on this thing because um yeah granted you can get you know 20 30 40 people into a car at one time um and what would happen in a situation, heaven forbid, if, if this attraction, or no, I'm sorry, attraction, but transportation system were to break down, you know, uh, in the middle of the, the, those two uh, L, uh, L towers uh, where it changes direction, um, you know, how does Disney go, uh, go about, you know, getting those people out of there and not risking uh, people's lives? I mean, we, you take a look at the monorail system, Eric, that you mentioned. Um, yes. On various various times and we've seen it in the past couple of months where the monorail system has been almost non-existent around the uh the loop of the seven seas lagoon because they've been working on it so people have had to take the ferry and the reason they do this is because they don't want to have another accident like they did quite a few years back with the, the yeah. monorails colliding and everything else yeah huge huge thing you know people lost life and and everything else can you imagine the scale of a tragedy when it comes to a system like this failing uh, because of the wire for whatever reason, something strange and not expected happens and, and something like that were to fall to the ground. I mean, it's, it's, the thought to me is just terrifying, literally terrifying. Yeah, I mean, and you deal with that in any type of, you know, transportation, whether yeah. it be in a plane, in a train, in your own car, that's understandable. Um, if, if it were to break down, children are going to freak out. Even Al John said this. Kids are going to lose their minds being suspended in the air in X amount of feet until Disney shows up to get them out of there. And it, it really, really, it, it scares me in a way. Uh, for those people who may have an issue with heights, won't be able to use this type of system, which there are not many. It's not going to be a big impact or anything. Yeah, You've got that. Uh, I keep... You want to say something? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, the other thing is, like Al John mentioned, uh, we can't have another monorail. As badly as we want a monorail to go to every park, as badly as we want a monorail to go to every resort, it costs way too much money. It's just too much. This is definitely a more cost-efficient form of transportation that Disney can use. But then how do you pay for something like that? I'm going to tell you how they're going to probably pay for it. You're going to see value resorts like the Pop Century and Art of Animation may not be so much value anymore because of a new transportation system like that being linked to it, which might mean at the same time 
you could see ticket prices at those two parks going up as well, like you see with the Magic Kingdom, because more people are going to be going there at the same time. So you've got your pros. You've got your cons. All Disney World. But at the same time, it's exciting. It's something new and something fresh. And I really, really think that a lot of people are going to enjoy it if, if it happens. Brass tax time, okay? I would ride this system. I would ride it. I would, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you would. Eric, I would. would you? Well, yeah. Um, and to talk about what, uh, what Jeff was talking about earlier, about what happens if something goes wrong. Okay, what happens if a monorail goes off the track? What yeah. happens if what happens if one of the ferry boats starts sinking? It's okay. always a possibility. Hey, you, you said it yourself. I mean, these are risks that you're gonna face with any form of transportation. And we've had we've had Disney shuttle buses involved in wrecks. We've yep. We've had monorails break down. And yes, probably people are going to freak out because I think part of the reason is because you're suspended. Oh, technically, yeah. Yeah. technically, you're not really any worse off than you would be in the monorail, but you're sitting on something. Mm-hmm. And I think so for, for some people, and this was me when I first rode the Sky Buckets at Disney World and really also at Six Flags over Georgia because uh, they had pretty much the same thing. I'm just thinking, okay, I'm, I'm dangling beneath a cable. What happens if that cable snaps? And I'm sure that question is going through everybody else's mind at okay. some point or another. So I have something. Eric and Jeff, and for our viewers, listeners, uh, at Gondola Project, which uh, talks about these type of cable-propelled transit uh, vehicles, um, you can check out gondolaproject.com. The issue of safety was raised in an uh, article posted January of 2016. Um, it says in the past few weeks, lift incidents have made headlines across North America. Dozens were evacuated after a chair fell down at a mountain sky resort. Okay, this is a little bit different. Um, but in terms of... Along the same lines, though, right? Yeah, yeah, along yeah. the same lines. But um, there has been, okay, look at this. Um, zero fatalities related to ski lift malfunctions in 1993. And this is just ski lift. This is not anything like that. It says uh, fatalities reported in Disneyland Skyway in 1994 and the State Fair of Texas Skyride in 1979. However, these systems feature open air gondola built cabins. So for the purpose of discussing safety levels of fully enclosed gondola systems, which are built in cities, these systems were not included in the analysis. But I think it's just interesting to say that in terms of safety, there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, reports, at least, um, published regarding this person's research on on those uh, those type of uh, enclosed vehicles. Um, sure. As you, yeah. as you yeah. guys, um, you know, as you guys, uh, you know, will do some research. I'm sure. Uh, I think you're going to be able to uh, find out some some other safety issues or whatever, but. Um, you know, who knows? I mean, I think I think their track record is pretty good just from my first glance of researching that. Well, you got to figure that if something does go wrong, there are safety protocols in place. I mean, you sure. see yeah. so many yeah. of these systems around the world, some that I mentioned and even more, that there's got to be something like clamps at these towers. There is, yep. To just like, all right, th this cable is going a little bit too slack. Let's clamp down on it. So that way, no one falls, no one gets hurt, that sort of thing. Now, my questions really are more along the lines of, how would these handle inclement weather? 
because go. think of when you think about it, Florida, you know, Central Florida, is like a severe weather magnet. I have been through a hurricane in in, in Orlando. I've been through a tropical storm in Orlando. There are tornadoes that come through Orlando. Lightning storms come through Orlando. Eric so, is mentioning the same thing I was going to mention too. So my yeah. question, my question is, how is this system going to cope with that severe weather? Because if it can't, any you know, if there's like a thunderstorm within five mile radius and they have to shut it down, this thing is going to stay down more than it's actually up. Oh, yeah. And so that's that's my question. Okay, that's one of my questions about how it handles severe weather. The other question is how to handle disabled or guests with limited mobility. Because let's let's think about these. These gondolas are going to have to almost be in constant motion, are they not? No. No, no. it's not going to be like it's not going to be like a, a like a dark road, like um, haunted mansion where they just keep on you know moving people. You go in, and then you 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 transport out. Actually, the one that I showed you at the top of the show uh, in Manhattan actually is basically like the monorail. It pulls into the station, it stops. People can load and offload. Uh, people with um, um, with a you know special needs can come in, um, park their wheelchair or whatever uh, conveyance they have, and then off to the races they go. They just sit back. But with this, with this type of system, though, doesn't that stop everybody else? Yes, it on does. the line when they when they stop to load passengers, does it stop you in between point C and D because they're loading passengers? Yeah, yeah, I think I think it would it would have to be. Um, yeah, so you would be like a constant stop and go the entire time that because they're loading people on. I mean, what just, you're so, gonna need, really, what you're gonna need if you're going to implement this system, is something that is almost it's it's, it's gonna have to be an omni mover. It's gonna have to be a lot of a lot of cars, cabins, whatever you want to call them in constant motion so, so here, yeah go ahead so what you're probably going to need is something similar to like the boarding station on spaceship earth so i think that that's correct and uh and once again yeah. in researching this at gondolaproject.com you can read their fact file frequently asked questions it says Number seven actually says, what happens if a gondola lift malfunctions mid-ride? It says, all CPT, all CPT systems are built with one or more backup diesel engines. It's an extremely rare event that a complete lift failure emergency procedures are in place with trained crews assigning safe and orderly evacuation of passengers, but it is an extremely rare event. Um, so, and, and, and they also say this, it's like, when was cable transit invented? Is this such a great idea? And if it is, why don't we see it in more places? And it says here, modern cable technology has been around for 70 years with the first passenger gondola arriving in the 30s. It's remained on mountains for many years, only making its mark in the urban market uh, recently. A lack of information or at least accurate information is available over the years has, sem has severely limited the technology as an alternative. Um, but yeah, there's as you as, as you saw, Eric, and probably in your research, all those places that you mentioned earlier uh, had been mentioned in this. Um, in yeah. terms of cost, it's similar to other public transport technology. Uh, it's independent, or it's dependent on the factors as local considerations, and um, but it is cost competitive. It can be built at a fraction of the cost of similarly rapid transport te transport technology. So. Sure. Yeah. I think it would fall in line with with Disney, um, and since there are only several, a hand less than a handful of manufacturers of the said technology, they've had a lot of years to make sure that the system is a tried and true performing technology and able to run 
uh, in various conditions like snow and ice. And I guess in our yeah. case, it would be like hurricane weather, right? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Because Florida weather, I mean, gosh, it changes on it, every 20 minutes, it seems, literally. Yeah. And, now, and I agree with Eric. I, I think the system would, oh, golly, especially during the summer and spring, would be down more than it would be up because once they start to see a storm come through, they've got to get everybody off those cars. And which means it's going to be X amount of time before that thing comes through and then they finally can get it back up. So we're talking, what, an hour? So it shut down and it's shut down for the next two hours while another storm goes through. It just... See, so that's the thing about the monorail. The monorail can run in high winds. Right. Yeah. The monorail yeah. can run in a thunderstorm. Well, yeah. and I believe that these, like I said, the, the the footage that I showed earlier in our show actually had the Manhattan um, Air Transit or Air Tram run in a ra run in rain. Yeah, and, it was uh, running. It was raining. Yeah, and other things. Um, so I, I'm sure it, it can. They did talk about this um, the 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 weather. Uh, I don't know if they're. I don't know what other places maybe that might have the type of weather that that Florida has. But they also talked about how high these things can be off the ground. And I think there may be a misconception that we have that it's going to be as high as the, the Skyway. And it doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't. I, I don't it think that has to be high no. enough to clear road traffic. It, That's right. And trees. Right. I mean, it yeah. doesn't have to be huge. Right. Well, so. at the same time, Disney can clear cut an area to where it doesn't have to go over trees. And we're not talking it has to be a very wide area where it's going to impact the ecological balance as far as Walt Disney property being a, uh, a reserve for animals and everything else. It's not going to make that big of a difference, so don't worry about that. But this thing could be as high as the monorail, and that's it, which at some points is fairly high up off the ground. At other points, it's really not. It's just literally just, just above your head. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it varies with those L towers that they were talking about in the permit plans. Uh, those can be at different levels. You may be traveling, you know, increasing in height for a certain, you know, point, and then you're going down as you reach one of the destinations, one of the stations that you're going to. So it's it's different yeah. levels Definitely. Uh, that you experience. Same thing with the Skyway, what they did, you know. it. Yeah top of it in the middle of fantasy land it went back down towards the end of fantasy land same with the tomorrow land so um that wouldn't be an, an issue i don't think i think it's it's a great approach a novel approach to transporting people in a very safe uh, ecologically friendly and um you know i guess fiscally responsible manner as well um something new fresh and we'll get guests happy um transported from one place to the next and i think that's a good thing if yeah. you're able to implement those those things um uh, and and build them in a very quick manner and without disrupting the guest experience i think that's also going to be a plus well, the, the the only thing that i suggest is if if, if they're going to do this and if you're going to ride it ladies and gentlemen uh, remember that this is an enclosed space uh, so if you're going to eat in mexico before you uh, get inside this thing uh, just be courteous to others that's that's all i'm going to say uh, when it comes to it cuz uh i'm sure the hvac will be working yeah yeah those those are not good <laughs> be courteous but Sorry. i mean yeah i mean the benefits are definitely there and they're great yeah. benefits like al john mentioned you know you you have a more energy efficient way of getting guests from point A to point B to point C. Uh, you don't have wear and tear on the roads. You don't have uh, as much carbon emissions because you really only have one motor running. And that's running it. Yep. Now, again, my main concerns are A, the weather, how they're going to be able to handle that, and B, how they're going to be able to to uh, handle guests with special needs and not shut the whole ride down because in uh, the footage that you showed at the beginning of the of the show, yes, it it was the kind that goes back and forth and stops. And that's the kind that you usually see on mountains and inclines. Mm -hmm. 
And there's a reason for that. The reason being is that the tram going downhill helps pull the one uphill because you've got so you've got a kind of gravity assist mm -hmm. this is not going to be on an incline mm -hmm. so and plus you have to have in order to keep this kind of capacity going you're going to have to have everything continuously moving it's going to have to be an omni mover like spaceship earth like the people mover but like the but old... even with those attractions, even with something like Spaceship Earth, it stops at times because it has to to get mm -hmm. passengers on board. Yes, and that may and that may still happen. What I would envision an extended loading area to awesome. where yeah. it, where you have like the the moving platform, you get these guests that have limited mobility up at the very beginning where the thing is, where the platform is moving so you have the maximum amount of time to get them on board okay what if there were specific and this is just off the top of my head specific cars made only for guests with disabilities it wasn't every was single car fantastic idea uh and not every single car that they can get into, but there are specific ones have a line separate for guests with disabilities. Once that mm -hmm. they may have to wait a little bit longer, even though those, those lines are usually shorter, they may have to wait a little bit longer, but there are specific car or cars, two to three or whatever come up. You stop for a short yeah. amount of time. You load those people in and especially, you know, getting them to where they kind of show up at the same time in different locations to where you can all do it at once and not do it at different times. I'm not an Imagineer. I'm not an engineer. But that would just make sense to me to mm -hmm. limit the amount of time you would have to stop if that were the case. You know? Yeah. I think I think that these are good for maybe short distances depending on, you know, uh, how many cars they're going to have operating at the same time. I do think at some point, I, yeah. I do think they will have to stop. I don't think it's going to be continuously moving. But those are all good. Uh, suggestions and I guess time will only tell I think that if they were uh, which Disney is very smart in testing these type of things I think they will probably end up putting in some type of system probably at Disneyland going back and forth from a certain area I think that might be a cool thing to, to transport people back and forth because right now as it stands with the Star Wars land uh, or the Star Wars experience over there in Disneyland they have to transport guests back and forth from a certain area of the park over traffic and that might be an interesting way to do it uh, with some type of, you know, take a star speeder and load it, you know, with some type of like a Harry Potter interactive LED, you know, experience. It's about to say that, yeah. Yeah, and transport people back and forth using, quote unquote, a star speeder. Um, and then we could probably find that same type of... Uh, of uh, transportation used to transport guests back and forth, much like the Hogwarts Express um, in some type of uh, limited capacity attraction, perhaps. Um, that may be another future uh, thing for future discussion, but I think all of those are great. I think they will probably have to, to do it in some kind of uh, short form testing at a resort. And, um, you know, to see if it, you know, to see what type of uh, issues happen. Um, and if they want to proceed uh, with, with building that, I mean, I, I think it would be interesting to see how they, they go about doing this type of stuff and if they're going to test it and where they're going to test it and, and, and do it. Uh, but I think there's a lot of history uh, with these type of uh, types of transportation already uh, with a very good track record. And I'm sure Disney's taken all that into account, guest safety being of the utmost importance. But uh, very cool um, discussion regarding this. Any final thoughts regarding uh, these gondolas? Or gondolas, however you want to say it. I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to sit here and, and say that this is a sure thing. Um, Disney files plans all the time that never see the light of day. 
and just end up, you know, in a filing cabinet or on a hard drive somewhere and, and sit and wait uh, for years and years and just, and just never come around. But we, we've said it for years upon years that Disney needs a new form of transportation, whether it be spending the money to expand the monorail, which we know is never going to happen, f- figure out a better way to make the buses more efficient, or which I, n- I never would have thought of in the first place. Um, but if it does happen, um, heck yeah, I will definitely get on it. I, I will not hesitate to get on it, whether it be all the safety concerns we've talked about, whether it be the weather or anything else. Yes, that would be a great way for me to, 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 uh, to get from place to place. And uh, Al John, like you and I talked about in the show before, change is scary. Uh, change can be uncertain, but sometimes change can be fun and very efficient at the same time. So it's, it's going to be awesome. Eric, final thoughts? Final thoughts is if they go through with this and they get the gondolas going, they need to have source of radio piped in through the overhead. <laughs> yeah. I like that idea. I, like I, will that triple, idea. I will triple that emotion on that. On that thought, we're going to go ahead and close the show out. But thank you for joining us for this great discussion on the latest rumor gondolas perhaps coming to the Walt Disney World Resort. Uh, be sure to check out WDW After Dark for more great news and discussion segments. We're going to be reviewing all kinds of great things in the future and give us a, uh, give you some more of those top five lists that we've been known to, to, to publish, um, uh, especially big in, in last year's uh, group of shows. So I encourage you to check out our top five list. Eric, where can people find you on the interwebs? You can find me on the interwebs on Twitter at Uncle Servo and at Sorcom Review. You can also find the Sorcom Review's Facebook page on Facebook. Also hit me up in the Sorcerer Radio Disney Fun Zone. And you can also hear me on Sorcerer Radio Tuesday mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern for the Sorcom Review and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern with Mighty Marvel Geeks. Thank you, Eric. Jeff. Find me on Twitter at DW underscore 60 and uh, listen to DW 60 on Thursday mornings on Sorcerer Radio at 8 a.m. Eastern time. And I love talking to people in the Sorcerer Radio Disney Fun Zone. So stop by there as well. Yep. Sorcerer Radio Disney Fun Zone on Facebook. And uh, you can also check out Kristen and myself there at WDWT Room Friday mornings on Sorcerer Radio at srsounds.com. Big shout out to Sorcerer Radio. All of us participated in the 16th anniversary of Sorcerer Radio at srsounds.com, broadcasting great Disney music for 16 years. Hard to believe, man. It's a fun day. It Good a fun day. day. It's a fun day. And uh, we will have uh, www.tgroom.com will be posting um, of that episode for download in its entirety. Uh, you can listen to that on demand coming up. Uh, you'll be able to check out Kristen. Her uh, podcast is up, Dining at Disney.com. She's working on a new book. Um, with John Donahue. So uh, hopefully we'll have more of that uh, coming to bookstores, hopefully in uh, 2018. So that should be uh, exciting. Um, and then, of course, you can check me out at JediMouseketeer.com. All my social media is there as well. So thank you so much for tuning in to the show. And don't forget, it's better after dark. We'll see you next time. Take care.